Hey guys. Um, so again, today uh, we'll go through our re-election efforts uh, for the Whitmer campaign. Um, just to give a little bit of background about what GMB is, um, we, all, we are a full service agency uh, in Washington, D.C., so working across analytics, uh, linear, and TV. Um, kind of a lot of this, what we'll talk through is probably not novel. Um, to be honest, we had some really good presentations and roundtables to kind of lead up to this that kind of touch on a lot of what I'll talk to that as well. Uh, so whether it's kind of an integrated approach, meaning that TV and digital are kind of planning with each other, um, maximizing our incremental reach across our plan, so kind of seeing what we're doing on linear, um, taking that data and then driving the incremental reach to our audiences, also flattening the frequency curve. Um, so a lot of it also has to do with, again, a lot of what we've talked about, um, except they feel a little bit about or like kind of that uncle at Thanksgiving that has to bring politics into it. So with that uh, further ado, just kind of going into the agenda again, the problem, kind of what we faced, uh, a little bit about the landscape of um, kind of what we saw in Michigan and just general uh, marketplace, kind of what our solution was and kind of what we're doing and what we're learning uh, from that campaign and bringing that towards kind of the larger uh, GMB approach to media moving forward. A little bit of creative, uh, promise you it's probably not going to be as fun as the last creative that we just saw, uh, but just kind of going through that. And then finally, the results. Um, so first, kind of the issue that we faced. Um, I think one of the, the key pieces that we talked about throughout this um, uh, presentations and this conference was really kind of the fragmentation of the media space. I don't think that's anything new. Um, wasn't new in 2022 when we were in Michigan trying to find the best way to reach our audience. Um, just a little bit of background about how we approach political campaigns, obviously at the state level, which this was in the gubernatorial race, um, we're getting very hyper-targeted. Um, we're not necessarily just blanketing, you know, uh, Michigan statewide, we're really getting in uh, to the nitty gritty uh, markets. Obviously, depending on the market, uh, there are variances in terms of the media consumption um, and kind of how we have to plan, right? So one market might not have high cable penetration, so it might be better to do broadcast. Others, it'll be too expensive given that everyone's trying to advertise during a political campaign. Um, so that's where we may be digital. Um, within that, uh, and we'll go to in, in the next slide, um, just the fragmentation kind of of the landscape um, and kind of seeing where we need to be um, for our campaign. So I think first, uh, kind of just the level set, this obviously is a video conference. so. Kind of starting with this, kind of what hasn't changed, what was the same kind of for that campaign in Michigan in 2022. Uh, first and foremost, video is the best awareness driver. Again, I don't think we have to tell you that. Um, all of you, you know, being video marketers. Um, with that said, you know, linear is not dead. We're still seeing high consumption, so really starting there and kind of seeing where digital could uh, surround that. I think in terms of programming, sports and own and operator are still key. Uh, so that was definitely a a big part of our strategy. Um, with that said, though, we have been seeing you know a rapid change in terms of consumption, specifically around cord cutters and low frequency TV viewers, um, really targeting them uh, using CTV. Um, this is also not a unique thing, but it was unique to digital, um, specifically that there's more premium inventory available. So going all the way back to 2018, we had some issues with our CTV partners where they were kind of over-promising the inventory that was available um, for political campaigns because there are restrictions and we kind of ran into issues. Um, really for political, the name of the game is just spend all the money, obviously, to help win. Um, so over the years, we have seen kind of an increase of that inventory, uh, which allows us to kind of reach our audiences at scale and become smarter with where we're trying to run. Um, I think the other piece is it's around like 80% of people have smart TVs now, so really seeing how we can leverage that platform um, for our political campaigns. Um, this shouldn't be familiar, or this should be familiar to you. Um, I know we talked about this uh, earlier in the conference. Uh, this is a Nielsen gauge basically just showing kind of what viewership data looks across the landscape. Um, on the left, as you see, Cable and broadcast still make up the majority of consumption, so we do have to take that into account when we are planning. Um, when you kind of look at that separately, though, you see that streaming is obviously bigger, so streaming is still an important part of our strategy to reach our audiences. And then on the right, kind of just showing you all the different fragmentation that we have to deal with. Um, on top of that, there are restrictions for political where we may not be able to run. Uh, for example, Amazon does not allow political advertising, so that kind of takes that out of the mix. So then we have to really think about these uh, parameters when we're thinking about how we reach our audience effectively. 
Um, and then lastly, you know, I did say that linear is still a big part of what we're trying to do and how we reach our audience. Uh, with that said, obviously, you know, paid TV uh, viewership is going down. Um, I think the kind of nuanced and important thing to note for political is that uh, we're a little bit behind the um, general marketing um, basically approaches in terms of like how we're trying to approach our audiences across channels. Um, you know, we're not dealing with brand marketers, we're dealing with campaign managers who are kind of stuck in their own way. Um, so we really want to use data like this to kind of show them, you know, how we can most effectively reach our audience. Um, it used to be, even only a few years ago, TV would get 75 plus percent of the budget. Um, so really, as a digital focus uh, marketer, I'm really trying to push our campaign to managers uh, to do more digital. And then here's our approach. Um, probably not too novel. Again, not a complex equation. Um, but I think the way to level set this is the political landscape in terms of agencies, if you want to call them that, is also extremely fragmented in the DC market. Um, there are really no holding companies where everyone can kind of work together. Uh, that is one of the uh, benefits of GMB is that we are a full service agency. Um, but the way that it works in DC is there are a lot of consultant agencies, you know, 10 to 20 people, that's their whole media team, and they specialize, right? So they'll only specialize in TV, multicultural, digital, social, et cetera. So it's harder for them to come to the table to have that integrated approach and say, hey, you know, it doesn't matter what platform we're using or what channel we're using, we just want to most effectively reach our audience. Obviously, there's the competition and the, the revenue aspect of that, right? If you're coming to the table to a campaign manager and you're two rival agencies, you're not going to want to give up your budget. So that kind of puts um, the campaign in a tough situation and then also gives us the advantage of that we can kind of come to our, uh, our campaign managers or clients and basically say, hey, we're one team. Let's figure out the best strategy uh, to reach the audience. And um, one of the things that we really did use and are kind of continuing to use is the use of ACR data. Um, probably not surprised to you guys what ACR is, but uh, really what we're doing is again trying to drive that incremental reach and that frequency against our audience. We're using ACR data. We have partnerships with all the major OEMs, um, one, to plan. So we're ingesting all of that data into a platform that we built, which I'll kind of go out into the output in a bit. Um, to optimize, it's really crucial for us to optimize um, just again, if you're unfamiliar with the political landscape, you know, this year I think it's expected to have about $12 billion, and that $12 billion is spent basically from July to November, right? So there's no leeway. There's no, oh, we'll take these learnings and go next year. It's really about spending that money effectively and efficiently in that short period of time. Um, so you need a platform, you need that data to kind of rapidly change your, your platforms and your, your strategy to ensure that, again, you, you come up with a winning uh, result. Um, the other unique thing about ACR is using it is one, again, to drive that incremental frequency. We may know that, again, in East Lansing, for example, there may be like low uh, cable penetration or something like that. We see that through that data, so then we can then retarget that audience using that ACR to drive up that frequency. Um, vice versa, uh, we might see that our TV buy has exceeded our frequency curve of what we're looking to do based on our models, so we're going to kind of go out of that market and spend that money elsewhere. Uh, lastly, the interesting thing, which is really important for political, is conquesting. So it's really going after the competitors' ads. If I know this audience of white TV viewers did not see the opponent's ad, I want to retarget them. Uh, vice versa, we may know that our opponent went out with like an economic uh, message. We can then retarget that that same audience with our perspective on the economy. Um, with that. So ACR, that's kind of been our big thing. I know through our conversations, um, what we had in our roundtables and the presentations, it's not perfect. It doesn't, you know, not 100% coverage, but it's what we have. Um, I think there are, you know, great products that kind of do something similar that what we built. Um, just based on kind of how our agency is and how our revenue comes in, it's on a two-year basis. So sometimes it's harder for us to have those enterprise uh, products that are kind of already doing what we're, we're looking to do. So um, in the political space, it's a little bit of scrappy, but I think uh, we are coming up with very effective uh, ways to reach our audience. Um, this is kind of an example of an output. Again, I'm sure that this is not groundbreaking. I'm sure other platforms have this, but really 
uh, for this Whitmer campaign. Uh, really wanted to get down to see you know, what that data showed us of like what our audience consumption is. And not necessarily doing it on a state level, but again, getting very granular, whether it's at a zip code level or even at the DMA or market level, um, kind of seeing where we needed to go um, before we, we had that media of eyes placed. So here, kind of seeing that overlap between OTT and live TV. Um, I know this is a video conference, but kind of seeing the other, the media mix as well. Um, this specifically kind of just shows some overlap with OTT and uh, linear only. Uh, again, using this across all of our buys before. And then lastly, uh, it's not just important to plan. Um, as I mentioned before, we're, we're constantly optimizing. You only have that short runway to, to effectively reach your audience um, with the frequencies you want. Um, so throughout the campaign, we're ingesting data and kind of revisiting our plan just to make sure um, that we're, we're hitting what we need to hit. And creative. Um, oh, you've probably seen enough uh, political creative, so <laughs> if you guys want to see it, I'll, I'll spare that to you, and honestly, the Meow Mix stuff is significantly better, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, finally, the results. Obviously, it's one thing to do that we have um, you know, our platforms to show us what we need to do, how we should approach it, what we're seeing in real time. Um, honestly, it could be tough and easy. I know that kind of goes against each other for political campaigns in terms of our KPIs. Ultimately, your KPI is to win, right? It doesn't matter if you have the, you know, the best, most creative strategy, you're winning awards in France. If you lose, it doesn't matter. Um, so ultimately, we saw really great results. This is the result for one of our um, partners kind of showing that incremental reach. Uh, so the, the uh, circle on the left is linear only. We reached 42% of the households in Michigan. Um, luckily, based on our optimization we were able to make, um, we reduced that re um, overlap, which is the arms in the middle, by 14%, which then led to an additional 190K IPs that we were able to reach, driving that incremental reach against the audience. Um, and then next, the next two slides, we're going into frequency. Um, I know it's been mentioned before in some of the other presentations, but kind of the theory of frequency curve um, and flattening the frequency, basically amongst people that are heavy TV user, users and light TV viewers. Um, so in this particular one, this is for Whitmer specific creative, meaning that we were retargeting people that have seen an ad or did not see an ad, a Whitmer ad on TV. Um, so based on the light blue, that's a low and um, very low frequency, so we're able to kind of drive that uh, frequency with the same messaging um, on OTT. And then finally, um, the conquesting piece, which is really important as well. Um, so this shows ads that were retargeted to people that saw Tudor Dixon, who is the com uh, competitor um, of Whitmer that, that race, um, and kind of seeing across mid to low, uh, we're able to retarget people that saw that ad uh, with Whitmer's messaging as well. And finally, just some YouTube pieces. Obviously, YouTube is a really big part of our strategy. Um, it's because it's a walled garden, it's a little bit separate from kind of the overall reach and frequency. Uh, but showing here, based on the measurement we're able to do and to carry out, uh, we're able to reach you know, an additional 660,000 people, um, adults 18 plus in Detroit. And with that, um, spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> Whitmer is uh, the governor of um, Michigan, and we had a very successful campaign with that. So. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Ryan. That was awesome. Do we have any questions for Ryan? Uh, thanks, Ryan. Uh, Steve from, from Media Post. Uh, now that early voting, if not just in this campaign, but other GMMB campaigns, especially the Biden campaign, um, how does early voting impact your cadence and your audience size and the nature of your audience. As you know, you say there's an, an enormous amount of money coming in just within a three or four month period, but with the preponderance of early voting that's going on, a lot of your audience is sort of peeling itself off. I'm wondering how that, how that figures into the equation. No, that's a good question. Um, I think part of it is just being very targeted. Um, with our splits now, it has become more 50-50, so, um, one, there is kind of a need to still kind of keep within that period. Um, the way that TV booking works is once you place, it's publicly available knowledge, um, and then our, component, our opponents basically can use that against us so they know what markets and um, 
audiences we're targeting, so a big chunk still needs to be within that, but to answer your question, kind of the use of like targeted digital to start reaching them, um, the use of addressable lists and voter files to kind of start seeing who's voting and then suppressing that audience so that we can start reaching them. So there is some support. Generally, there'll be kind of smaller buys in April that you'll see. A lot of it is a stalemate though, because once your opponents or other packs go in, then you kind of start spending and then it kind of rolls out of control. Hi, I'm Lena. Um, I just spoke. <laughs> I'm presentative. Um, I'm curious if you were thinking about uh, voter age in terms of uh, the governor, if she you know, resonated with younger, older audiences, and how that affected your weighting of uh, linear and like CTV and digital. Yep, that's a good question. So generally, uh, when we look at the voting blocks, there's kind of two main age brackets. There's youth, which is 18 to 34, and then 35 plus. Uh, through polling and through kind of consistent campaigns, we've seen that that adults or male or women 35 plus is kind of that big gap or that, that big chunk of that um, audience in terms of voting. So we really start there. Um, that's just with traditional though. So generally most of the linear buys and specifically for this was 35 plus. Um, in midterms, people come out less than presidential. So I think it is a focus kind of on that older audience. Um, with that, though, we did have segmentation, right? It was not just targeting 18 plus, um, really segmented kind of that main voter, 35 plus, but then also reaching that youth with different messaging as well. So it definitely is taking into account um, kind of what's polling well, what tests well for creative. Um, and even with those cohorts, you know, reaching men or women with different messaging based on kind of what's popping in the polls. All right, well, Ryan, thank you so much. That was thank great. You.